Jubilee. I, I just want to tell you from the very beginning what was so cool about Love Walk Jubilee. And that was our president went on stage and his keynote uh, was three words on the screen. And it said, um, thank you, I'm sorry, and please. And it was so endearing on how he literally said, thank you for staying with us. Thank you for being here. Thank you for working with Tupperware. Um, and then I'm sorry. I'm sorry that we've fallen through craziness. I'm sorry that it has been unusual, all right, not the norm for Tupperware. And please hang with us because we're coming back stronger than ever, all right? And so, yay, right? And so, we proceeded, and you'll see today that his words constantly came back to us because we knew this was him coming back stronger than ever. Um, you know, it's no secret that Tupperware had a an issue financially that they had, um, you know, uh, long story short, it comes from something that happened in Mexico with a very large lawsuit that um, it was not even Tupperware. It was another company that Tupperware owned uh, that they had since closed. But I will tell you, it had um, an effect on all of us, okay? And so um, they might have won, but we lost, all right? But we're coming back and we're we're strong and, and we're Tupperware, all right? And we're tough, we're strong. And I will share with you that what's really, really cool is that um, they've settled that. Um, and it's not gone, but they've made a great settlement that they can work with uh, and we can we can overcome. Um, and so here today, um, Tupperware has a great opportunity to really invest in us again. And you're going to see that, all right? And I will tell you, in my 40 years, and I will have to tell you, there have been some great years in those 40 years of, of great programs. I've never seen these kind of programs pulled together. I've never seen this much at one time. I've seen great programs, but not bam, 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 all right? And it's pretty exciting to be part of Tupperware right now. It almost feels like we're on in Tupperware on the ground floor, like a ground floor of a new, a new beginning, a ground floor of a new, a new era. Uh, and that's exciting. It's exciting for me to be here 40 years and wanting to be another 40, but it's more exciting for me to realize that you have such a golden opportunity to make more money than we've ever made before in Tupperware. All right. And so um, let's get this party started again. Do I have, is this a clicker? Do I have to use my clicker? I have to. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. All right. So um, Campion Enterprises, we, <laughs> We're number five in North America. Company leadership development. That means that um, um, all the companies in, in North America and Canada, including US, um, we are the number five company for the most new leadership. And to helping people move up in leadership, helping you see the benefit of making more money at the next level and where you can have a little more. I don't want to push anybody into something we don't want, but I want to tell you right now, everybody is a leader. You're either a good leader or a bad leader, but you're a leader, okay? People follow you, okay? People see you and they learn from you and they, and so everybody is a leader. Now, I want to help you be the best leader. Now, I will also share with you that why not get paid for it? Because you're already leading, all right? Whether you have people literally underneath your on the paperwork underneath your name or not does not make you a leader what makes you a leader is if you people are looking at you and seeing that they want to be like you in any way shape or form that becomes a leader personality now we are not we're not talking there because we're also number five so, and number eight, recruiting. Number five in sales, number five in leadership, and number eight in recruiting. And so that's top 10, people. <laughs> that's awesome. Now, this is all the four TriStar Action Joiner Company. And so, can you imagine where we're going now? <laughs> so, I will tell you, it kind of just moves us, bumps us right to number three, to be honest with you. Um, and if you look at the statistics in the last few weeks, we're popping up number three, number three, number 
great. So it's quite an honor to uh, really be moving up in a couple of All right. So um, we were also honored and uh, number 18 in the world. Growth. Um, and that is, I mean, do you want to be, you know, here's the thing. Do you want to go to college closest to your house? Or do you want to go to college that's best for you? And I believe that Tupperware Champion Enterprises is the best place to be if you want to grow a business. If you really want to have the connection with the team, if you really want to have the opportunity to um, be out of the box thinking and have a group of powerful people that we don't judge. We want you to be you. We want every single one of you to feel comfortable and be who you um, who you are. I. I absolutely embrace the differences that we bring to the table. I look in this room right now and it gives me joy to see the differences that we bring to the room and how we are a family. We are the champion family. And that gives me joy like none other, none other, okay? And so please be here today, be wanted and welcomed in every sense of the way. I will tell you, I'm thrilled that you are here. And I want to invite you to bring more people just like you to our room and to our team and to our, to our, to our table today. Um, and so number 18 in the world comes from a lot of years of, um, of loving people and who they are. And, and, you know, I get this from my parents. My daddy was a Baptist minister. My mother still lives with me today. My daddy passed in 2018. My mother, 92, uh, lives with me today. And so if you don't know a lot about me, you're about to find out, all right? Because Jim and I were honored with um, what is called Leader of the Year um, and Lead of the Heart. I can think about Lead of Your Heart is um, the other business leaders vote and they pick who is leading with their heart. And, and then the regionals vote and make the final decisions in the corporate levels. And so it's a huge honor, guys, a huge honor. And I thank you. I've been to Hong Kong with the World Forum, which is the CEO's trip that he only uh, that only five people in the U.S. make the trip. I have been to um, Hawaii, to Alaska, to 32 countries. But you know what the joy of this trophy? That's, that's who I am. This is who I am. Yes, I loved Hong Kong. I loved Italy eight times. I loved all those beautiful trips. This is my legacy. This is who I am. Hey, Pam. Yes. What we wanted. <laughs> Sorry, my breath was over there. Oh, my <laughs> because of the Lead with the Heart Award, and that is honestly, so well deserved and yeah. long overdue. <laughs> long. long overdue. Um, they've pulled that award many things over the years, and every time I'm like, why is that not us? Why is that not Pam and Jim? And it was so satisfying to see you get that reward um, back in what February. And guys, you did not get a chance to go to Jubilee this year. I'm very, very sorry. However, I have to say, you would have had your mind completely blown by the speech that this woman gave on the main stage for everyone where she said how much she loves this company and she loves her people and she loves everybody in that room and the amount of love that Tupperware gives to all of us and believing in us all these years and she shared that message and Tupperware trusted her to share that message and one of the things that she said, which she said, we've been through a lot, right? Over the last couple months, when everybody's coming at us and they're saying all these things, I heard Tupperware, blah, blah, blah. I heard Tupperware, blah, blah, blah. And she said, and I'm just like, blah, 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 blah. Because I know my company and I know my people. And I know, like, I know, like, I know that we will get through this. And that's the leader that we are honored to have. And I tell you what, by the time she left that stage, I'm sure there were people in that room that wish they had her as a leader and so we should be very proud of the fact that we have Pam and Jim leading us through everything that comes good bad ugly right 
I stand with Pam and Jim, and I know everybody in this room, especially the leaders that have worked with her hand in hand all these years, stand with Pam and Jim. And we are so proud of you and everything that you have helped all of us accomplish. So we love you very much. Sometimes you join Tupperware because you need a little extra money. Sometimes you join Tupperware because uh, you need a lot of Tupperware in your kitchen. I joined Tupperware, honestly, because I, I wanted Tupperware in my kitchen. I didn't want to pay full price. <laughs> to me, it was my wholesale club, all right? Um, but when I joined Tupperware, I found out that it was much more than a discount. <laughs> and I found out really quick that I could... I could um, sell them for tell jokes, eat food, get paid. <laughs> I'm in. Um, and so it made a lot of sense for me really early in the business that if I stayed with this business, I could do more for my family. And my why became my children. And these are my, this is my family today. And I will tell you, they are absolutely everything to me. They are um, my gang, my gang. They are my happy. They are my. Uh, they give me joy like none other. And I will share with you, I have the most amazing children. I have the best daughter-in-law the world can give. And I have the best son-in-law the world can give. And my three children, I have two boys. Um, Ryan is my oldest. Justin is my middle son. And Ashley is my daughter. And um, my grandchildren are Presley Carson and Dylan. Those are girls. And <laughs> they're the little girls in the center, all little girls with little boy names. And then my little boys are Luke, and uh, he's the baby, and Ricky, who is five. And so they all live in Atlanta. They're all best friends. I did something right, right? They hang out all the time. And so I, I take pride in that because I've told them all their life that when they were young and they'd be fighting, you know, having an argument or something like that, I'd say, that is your best friend the rest of your life. And do you know my girlfriend that I went to school with? Oh, yeah, you're right, you don't. And <laughs> so you be nicer to your brothers and sisters than you are to anybody else because they are the rest of your life. And it worked out. <laughs> it, it really worked out. Um, so my um, why when I came in was certainly my children. My why today is my grandchildren. I want to leave a legacy. I want them to uh, go to a craft table someday and when they're 40 years old and say, Oh, my grandmother sold Tupperware and she was top of the nation. She drove a company car. You know how that happens when you're working a booth every once in a while, you have somebody come by through that and you think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? I want them to have you. That's it up. <laughs> <Right? laughs> and I am so proud of who I can be for them because uh, a leading lady in any family brings, um, brings value to the family in so many ways, but gives girls a vision. Now, I don't want them to necessarily have a vision to be a Tupperware lady, even though I would love that. I want them to have a vision of being able to do whatever they choose to do and know they can do it. Um, and I will also tell you that my little boys, I want them to learn that the love of um, a powerful woman is the thing you want. I will tell you, my daughter-in-law and my daughter are very powerful women. My son said to me one time, I'm afraid of two women in my life. And I'm thinking, you're not afraid of me. He goes, nope. <laughs> my sister and my wife. <laughs> yes, 
<laughs> I did it right. Um, and the other reason my joy today and my why is my mother. I told God, and I will share with you, I told God 20 years ago that if he took care of my business, I'd take care of my parents. My parents, Baptist minister's wife, uh, Baptist minister, and there's no retirement in the Baptist faith. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just sharing with you. There's not a retirement there. He always did really well in um, saving money, and he um, lost his money in the stock market. And I was there right behind him to support him. And, um, you know, un unfortunately, that happened. But fortunately, God provided like he always did for my parents. And, um, and I will share with you to this day, uh, this is my why. I will take care of her in my home, and she will live a, uh, a joyous uh, last years of her life. And and her puppy. <laughs> um, yeah, well, Macy. So when I started Tupperware, um, I will share with you, I was not the person I am today at all. I was a um, preacher's daughter. Um, I fold the bulletins. Anybody else fold bulletins for your kid? <laughs> I did you? I folded the bulletins. I cleaned the nursery. I cleaned, you know, preacher's daughter. We ran it. It was business, but it was God's business. But it, I, you know, we had, I had responsibilities. This is actually me on my 16th birthday. Um, that is the day we moved out of our house and left West Virginia. And I said to myself, I can remember setting in the house, everything's packed up, ready to go. I'm sitting on a hope chest. And it made me think, I don't even know the man I'm going to marry. Because I thought, you know, you, you think, oh, you're going to marry somebody, you know. And I'm thinking, I don't even know the man I'm going to marry. Well, I met him right away. <laughs> and we fell in love very young. And we were, I was 16, he was 19, and we got married. And you notice that's a marriage in the parsonage because uh, no money. So um, my parents were always very, you couldn't tell that we had no money. I knew we had no money. <laughs> and the church, the house was free. <laughs> the church would have been free too, but that's a lot of flowers. And so we got married right there in the, uh, pars uh, in the parsonage. That's what the church house is called. And uh, that's in front of my mother's lovely curtains that are coming back to stuff. And, <laughs> and um, you know what? Uh, this is my first software party. When I got ready to go do that first Tupperware party, I was scared to death, so I went and bought a new dress. <laughs> Look at that dress, it's back in style. Um, <laughs> Jimmy was a police officer right here in Gilbert Heights, and we had two little boys, uh, Justin and Ryan, and I was a nervous wreck, but I'll tell you, I was going to do it because I thought if I could just do this, they told me I could do six parties, I could get the discount and get everything in my kitchen I wanted. Because I had a Tupperware party, and at that Tupperware party, I wanted everything. I had a new addiction, and I needed to have a way to pay for my addiction. And I couldn't even imagine paying for it because I didn't have money. Because Jimmy was working 3 to 11, 11, 7, 7 to 3, three different shifts and changed every three weeks. And so for me to get another job and pay somebody to watch my boys, I wasn't going to have any money. And so it made no sense for me to go get a job and pay childcare because I would have to, plus I didn't have a second car. We had one car. And so for me to run Jimmy to work on those crazy schedules, getting kids out of bed, putting kids back to bed, three to level of seven, seven, three is not easy on any police officer. So if you know anybody that's doing that, they don't really do it that much anymore like that, but it was crazy. And he was working three side jobs. He was working Missy Lake, he was working St. Bart's and he was working, um, I called it, it was called, uh, uh, what's that place that has pizza? And the, and the clown and all that other stuff. Chuck E. Cheese, yes. <laughs> yeah, I remember all those places right there. So he's working Chuck E. Cheese. I called it um, <laughs> uh, the tenderonies that were working there with him. And I was girls. <laughs> but, but I will tell you that. Oh, yeah. shy but I wanted to I wanted it so bad that I wanted that Tupperware so bad that I was willing to do whatever it took to do it because I couldn't afford to pay for it and it was my way I gave up ceramics can you believe it so that I wouldn't have to have a babysitter I was giving my one night a week that ceramic night my mom would always watch the kids for ceramics so I could do a little something outside the house I gave up ceramics so I could give to Tupperware so I was allowed to do one party a week and I did my first couple parties and I was making money. I couldn't believe it. My first party, I made money. my second, my third, my fourth. Oh, I was making money. And I told Jim, I will only do six parties. And when I'm done with my six parties, I'll get out because he told me not to do it. And I said, well, come on, you will have played, you play ball, you work three jobs and you work a regular job. Can I do it? So fine. I got the permission to do it. And I will tell you that I was dating parties like crazy and not telling them. 
because I thought, how am I going to talk him into this? So I took the extra money and I gave him extra money. I said, hey, God, I have all this extra money and I know we can put it in the bank, but would you like to have a little extra cash? He used to come home for lunch every single day, not because he loved me, he did, but because it was free. And he, I mean, pops eat free a lot of times, but he couldn't even take the chance of whether or not he was going to eat free that day. That's how tight we were financially. We were so tight. I borrowed the money from my mother to join Tupperware because we were so tight. And I had to give it back to her. <laughs> but it was fine because I started making money. All of a sudden, I would have money. And I will share with you, I did not have a college degree. And I knew that I had fashion degree. I as a fashion model and I loved fashion, but I didn't want to do that. That's not that's not the kind of people I wanted to be around because it was not, they were not my people. They were not my heartfelt people. They were too into themselves. And I love fashion, but I'm not about that. I'm not that's not who I am. So this made really good sense for me to go ahead and give a whirl. And real quick, we decided to add a new member to the family because I was making money and I thought I can never afford to have another child. And then when Tupperware happened, I thought we could. <laughs> okay. And so I said to God, I'll have another child if I can have a little girl. And if she can have an outgoing personality, and if she can have my blue eyes, <laughs> and if she can have my smile. And I wanted to have dad's hair. And I literally gave God a list. And I ended up pregnant. I'm not kidding, it worked. <laughs> okay. I'm like, whoa. I didn't even, I, and it was a surprise pregnancy. It was not a planned pregnancy. It was a surprise pregnancy. When I found out I was pregnant, I'm like, oh, it's pregnant. And I, then the whole pregnancy, I'm like, I'm having a little girl. And everybody's like, how do you know? Because that was before the test. I said, because I know. I'd go to my Tupperware party and I'd have a picture of the boys. I said, this is Ryan and he's five. And this is Justin, he's 18 months. And this is Ashley. And she is minus three months, but she has dark hair, my blue eyes and my smile. And they'd be like, you're crazy. So one of my hosts said, I am having your first party back to work. I said, okay. And so she had my first party back to work because they wanted to see this little girl. So I get there with this little girl <laughs> and it was a baby shower. They had their own for me. Oh, it was a host oh. chain of parties that I'd done a lot with and they wanted to be the first party back because they uh, they actually wanted to move to the street. Sunrise and run up there. <laughs> <laughs> um, house went up for sale. They're like, you have to move in. I was like, that's the type of business. Well, you know what? Tupperware really worked well for me. And it was all about my why. And every day I'd get up, it was my why. You know, sometimes people would cancel parties and sometimes things didn't come in right. And sometimes, you know, I'd call customer care or whatever and there'd be an issue. Sometimes I'd call my business leader and there'd be an issue. Sometimes I, you know, tried to date parties and couldn't date any. Sometimes I'd try to recruit and somebody quit on me. All of those things happened to me. What made me stay? My why. My why? Because you know what? I walk away from a house that was a dud party and I'd say, flowers are beautiful because it didn't matter what happened in there. I had a bigger why. My bigger why was what my eyesight was on all the time. And so all this stuff didn't matter. And I didn't let it matter. It was like, you can't get through to this because I've got this that I'm working on and I'm focusing on what I'm going for. And so your why needs to be powerful. And you need to ask yourself, what do you really, really, really want? Well, somebody told me that they made six figures. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you can't possibly make six figures in Tupperware. And, you know, I'd always dreamed about if I had a college degree, I could probably make six figures. I will share with you, I didn't need a college degree to make six figures. I needed a lot. And if you want to make six figures, you don't need a degree. You don't need a special job. You don't need a special piece of paper. You need a why. You need something so powerful that'll make you want to do it every single day. It might be your legacy. It might be a person that you love that you really want to give something to. It might be something silly, but usually your why is so powerful, it touches your heart and it can make you cheer up, okay? I always say the why can make you cry. So ask yourself what you really want to want. Me, 40 years ago, I said, I'm going to make those six figures because I dreamed when she said that to me, I dreamed that night about if I made six figures. I wasn't really dreaming, only dreaming. I'd lay away and think, if I made six figures, Jimmy wouldn't have this pressure on. If I made six figures, Jimmy wouldn't have to work a side job, so tired and exhausted, carrying a gun. If I made six figures, we could put the sweet stuff in the backyard. If I made six figures, I could buy the bike ride. If I made six figures, we could have a second car and it wouldn't be so stressful on the family going back and forth. 
I want to share with you that it was a different program then, but to tell you what a rock star I was when I decided I was going to go for it, I got a car in Tupperware in seven weeks. Wow. And that's like somebody now getting a car in like four months. That's pretty powerful, okay? Even then, all right? And so it was a different program completely, but I was driven. I was a driven woman. And the why is why. Um, so I said, why do I want six figures? Because I want a new home. And I want I want a paper off home. I want a home. We were always renting. Even when I joined Tupperware, we were renting a home. Um, and I want to put the kids through college. And that was so powerful to me that I would, my kids would go to college. And I, you know, at the time I felt inferior because I didn't go to college and other people did, other friends did. And I felt a little bit inferior. I don't today. <laughs> Because I'm like, hey, Jeff. but at the time I did. Okay. And, um, and I also share with you that my sister went to college. My brother went to college. I chose not to go to college. I chose to have a family and I was happy with that. But at the same time, there's a little bit that made me think I should have gone to college or what would be different if I went to college. I look at it today and realize that if I had gone to college, I probably wouldn't have the success I have today because I would have done Tupperware and fallen in love with it and been so driven. So God was in control of that. Um, so why again? Ask yourself why and keep digging on that why. Keep digging on that why. And when I dug again, I came up with, I don't want to work Jimmy work so hard, but why again? Because I cannot fail my husband or children. I am smart and I am brave and I can and will do this. Brian is four and the clock is ticking. And I have 14 years that will be, he will be out of the house and on his own. Never again can I give him the childhood that I want to give him. There is a countdown going on and a limited time opportunity is now or never. Mommies, if you're in the room, there's a countdown going on. But even grandmas, if you're here, there's a countdown. And those children go up. And if they're here, why? You've got a countdown. You need to work now so that you can provide. And I don't love money, but I love what money does. And if money is going to provide and take stress off your marriage, if money is going to provide and, and take and give you the home that you've always dreamed of, or give you the um, the medical attention that you need, whatever it is, or for somebody else, you need to realize that Tupperware is here to help you provide for that. You know, the next thing I did was I made that compelling, and you have to make it compelling. When I get up at six o'clock in the morning to get out of bed and care for the day, which do you believe is more compelling? I need to get up because I want to make six figures because I want to pay bills and I want to buy a house and I want to invest in college fund. Or I need to get up because I have six to 12 summers left and Ryan, Justin, and Ashley will never again have the opportunity that I want to give them. You know, creating the perfect environment to grow a family, a strong family, is so valuable. And Tupperware can be there for that. Because the allowance that Tupperware gives you is the most important thing. Today, my wife's different. It's my grandchildren. And if you're wise, powerful enough, the rest is easy. Your how to's come to you. Do you know if your why is big enough, the how to's come? You'll hear them, they'll, you'll, they'll show themselves, they just happen. If you want something bad enough, you'll figure out a way. You know what? They always say the strongest force in the universe is a woman's desire. <laughs> you see something you want, you figure out a way. All right. And you know it too. All right. So my joy, my joy was putting my children through college. All three of them went to Ohio State and all my money. I had pay raise after 12, 12 years. I'm like, yes. All right. I think Bonnie just felt that pay raise. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> pay raise. Yes. All right. And then you know, I and you had four kids, right? Yeah. Um, and I will share with you the wedding of my dreams. And I say my dreams because you saw my wedding picture in the parsony. So when my daughter was ready to get married, I'm like, hey! <laughs> yes! <laughs> and I will share with you, as she told the wedding planner, whatever my mom says goes, because she has better taste than me. <laughs> <laughs> but I will tell you, uh, some of you were there, and some of you know Ashley, um, but it was truly a gorgeous wedding downtown Cleveland. We made it a destination wedding because her family, his, she was from here, but his family is from Atlanta and New York 
and they were coming in all to Cleveland. So we just used the theme Cleveland. And so we had the Cleveland bags with everything from the stadium mustard to, to uh, the, uh, uh, the peanuts and everything Cleveland. We even had a hot dog vendor come up at the final hour of the wedding, come up on the wedding floor, up the elevators onto the wedding floor. And we were downtown Cleveland at the, um, what's the name of that gorgeous building? Uh, <laughs> it is a very old, gorgeous building that rents out for weddings only, and it is gorgeous. Uh, I don't know, I can't think of that. No. No, no, it's not yeah, it's it's no, it's like an old, like, old, old school Cleveland. Old school Cleveland, gorgeous. It just was stuck, yeah. stuck, stark. Um, the dance floor lit up. It was just like Cinderella. She wanted to dress like Cinderella. She had it all. It was the tour, and it was, and all the directors were there. It was so fun. Um, but it was, it was our wedding. I tell them like to this day, it was our wedding. <laughs> and show up and make comments. Remember our wedding, mom? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I will tell you the travel. Tupperware, my guys. What do you want? What do you really want? Because these are the perks that came along with the six figures. These are the perks that came along with giving my children the lifestyle that I always dreamed of having them have. These are perks. I've been to 32 countries um, in Italy eight times. And, and I will tell you that Jimmy loves to travel. I love to take him. I will also tell you that you have to believe. You have to believe in what you're doing is right for you. Do you believe? Because I will share with you. Um, do you dismiss Tupperware as a cute little hobby? That's costing you money. Mm -hmm. That little belief right there, mm -hmm. costing you money. Do you consider it a pyramid scheme? Do you know what a pyramid scheme is? A pyramid scheme is an, an illegal business where you give someone money and get nothing in return. Is that what we do? No. Yeah. Okay, if we are a pyramid scheme, so is Walmart. Because there is a store manager. There's somebody that owns the store, by the way. There's a store manager, and then there's uh, uh, directors, department directors, and then so go on down and all the way down to somebody that comes in and is a brand new employee. So that's a pyramid. <laughs> all right. We are not a pyramid. Do not let people say that to you. And if anybody ever says that to you, you me mentally just say, This is my little secret. Okay, I'll tell you about myself. When somebody says something to me stupid like that, in my head, I don't say it out loud, but in my head, I just go uneducated. This is my words. In my head, uneducated. Uneducated. And you know what? If I ever look at you and smile, <laughs> you <say> so? <laughs> I might be thinking oh, that protects me. Why do I do that? Because I, my number one thing I have to do is always protect, always protect me, so I can be what I need to be to provide for my family. And you know, I will tell you that right there is really key to your success. Are you protecting you? And then last, you think uh, it can't be a real business unless you bunch of cloth. Hello, let me share something with you. Professional footballs, do you know that there's a $9.58 million business? Do you know music industry is a $15 billion business? Movie industry is an $88 billion business. Uh, video game industry is a $76 billion business. Natural food industry is a $90 billion industry. And network marketing industry, which we are categorized in, is a $178 billion business. That's a business, all right? You know, and if people say it's not a real job in your head, all you have to do is say uneducated. Or my other one is paycheck. <laughs> okay, you don't know if you're uneducated. And sometimes I will tell you, the people that are uneducated, sometimes you live with them and you love them. Sometimes you sleep with them. But I need you to protect yourself because they love you and they're trying to love you back. And so, oh my goodness, did I hit a heart? <laughs> Somebody's giggling. But I will tell you, you've got to love them anyways because they love you and they're trying to protect you, but they don't know. They're uneducated. They don't know what you know. And they don't have the desire in you that you have with your wife. So enjoy your why, love your why, and love your people, and wait till they come around because they will. Jimmy came around mm -hmm. kind of when I drove in the car, but maybe <laughs> <laughs> okay. The car was one of the things that made me spin his wheels. All right, the self esteem.
self-esteem is so important. What is your self-esteem? I understand it's hard because you get beat up. People aren't always kind to you. But you know what? You need to know who you are. And you need to know you're wanted here. You're welcomed here. And we think you're awesome. And I will tell you that when you were born, do you know you had a high self-esteem? You did. Every child born has a high self-esteem. The world comes in. The environment comes in and can damage that. And you need to rise above that. You need to remember who you are and remember you're here for a reason. And I have to tell you something. I'm a very strong believer. And if this is too much for you, I'm sorry, but you have to know who I am. If you're in my circle, you're here on purpose. God wants you here. I am to bless you. I am to encourage you. I am to motivate you. I am to inspire you. And so just know you're my people. Okay? You're my people. I'm the mama bear, but you're my people. The other thing I need you to know is these little people right here, they were born with a high self esteem as well. And I want to tell you that there's an elephant, and that elephant is tied as a baby to a tree. That elephant will grow up and always stay tied to that tree. That elephant will never try to untie himself from that tree because he thought as a child he couldn't, so he won't. You need to know that sometimes you have a tree you're tied to, and you need to get rid of the tree. You need to come up away from it. All right, and so stop complaining. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to get you anywhere. In fact, it's the wrong approach, and it's poison. Every time you hear yourself complain or, com or, or say anything negative, you need to stop because it's not going to help you grow your business. It's poison, and it's costing you money. I want you to remember that. That's another thing I've always done to teach me to really manage my business and not let those things in is say to myself, that's costing me money. That's poison. That's going to cost me money. I used to put a rubber band around my wrist because somebody told me to do that. Might have been Cheryl. But put a rubber band around your wrist. And every time you say something negative or you hear yourself being negative, you take it and flip yourself. <laughs> Just like it hurt your skin, it's hurt your business. All right? Uh, the other thing is, is, what would you do if you knew you would not fail? Where would you go? And what would your title be? I want to ask you the reasons why people, um, the reasons why people will join your team. Did you know these? Here's the reasons. Number 10, income control. They want to be able to control their income. I said it. They heard it. They're like, oh, yeah, I want to make money. Helping others. They want to help others. They feel good about that. They have virtual business. Uh, I, I need to work from home. Perfect reason. Recognition. It feels good to have somebody clap for you, doesn't it? You mop the floor every day, nobody claps. Come here, we clap. All right. <laughs> Creativity. It's all to be creative and own your own business. A flexible schedule. You want to have a discount. You want to have first order award. That's something that we showed them and they said, yeah, I want it. Um, then own your own business. But the main reason why people will join your team, bam, they like the person that asked them. That's why people will join you. So you have to be likable. You have to be somebody what people want to hang around. If they want to hang around you, they'll join your team. If if you if they don't want to hang around you, they're not going to join your team. All right. And so be that person that people want to be around and lead. You are already a leader. Lead. Lead. And if your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and be more, you are a leader. I want to invite you to take the chance, take the chance stage. I want to invite you to take a chance, take control, and take that stage. Own it. Be who you are born to be. You're a champion. Let's do it.